the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Peter Piper pecked a pick. Peter Piper pecked a pick. What are you mumbling about, Ethelbert? Well, I got a bet with Casey, Mr. Marvin. He didn't think I could say three times running. Peter Piper pickled a pack. Uh, Peter. Peter. You know, it doesn't look to me as though you could even say it once, Ethelbert. That's why I got to practice. Peter Piper. Now, look, why not try an easier sentence, Ethelbert? You know, more useful, too. Like what, Mr. Marvin? Like, uh,. Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Miscarriage of Justice. <laughs> Afternoon, a busy downtown street. A darkly handsome, flashily dressed woman alights from a taxi cab. What's it? Huh? Who's it? What's the idea of grabbing my arm? I don't know you. You know me very well. I, I never saw you before in my life. You say that to me? Your husband's father? If you don't let me go, I, I'll call a cop. No. I call for a cop. Police! Police! Stop that. Let's go someplace and talk. No, you bad woman. Every day I pray I've seen you sometimes, and now my prayers is answered. Let me go. Hey, hey, what's going on here? This crazy old man, officer. Arrest him. Go to jail, Mr. Policeman. Look, I'll tell the truth. She's Mercedes Domingo. Oh, no. It's a lie. Ah, no, hold it, hold it here. Just who is Mercedes Domingo and why? Ten years ago, Mr. Policeman, my son Carlos is sent to prison for the murder of his wife. Only he and I know he's not guilty. Now the world will know. Because this woman is the wife he did not kill. All right, you new talk. All right. I'm ready to issue a statement. Uh, we want to interview her. Yeah, we want pictures of her and the old man who recognized her. That's right. Well, Casey, Miss Williams, all of you newspaper boys and girls, later. But right now, I'm giving you a break with an advance statement. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you may be unfamiliar with the Domingo case. So I'll begin with a brief resume. Nearly ten years ago... A young laborer named Carlos Domingo was convicted of killing his wife, Mercedes. On circumstantial evidence, Mr. Prosecutor. Well, I, Casey, was not district attorney at that time. <laughs> <laughs> According to the testimony, Domingo had threatened her at various times. She disappeared. And he told inquiring neighbors that he believed she'd run off with another man, a waiter named Gonzalez. Now, this waiter was unknown in the neighborhood, and Domingo's stories about him were extremely conflicting. Oh, we got then the body of a murdered woman was recovered from the river and identified as the missing Mercedes. I saw that body, Ann. Eh? It's been in the water a long time. Quiet, Carlos Domingo was brought to trial, convicted, and sentenced to death. Fortunately, his sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment. Yeah, after he spent nearly a year in the death house. Well, now this man's wife has reappeared alive. She's been positively identified as Mercedes Domingo. Well, what did she say about letting her husband uh, be sent up for her murder? Well, she claims she didn't know anything about it, Miss Williams. She denies knowing any waiter named Gonzalez and says she was working in a small town in Texas at the time Domingo was arrested and brought to trial. <laughs> she says the papers down there didn't carry the story and she may be telling the truth. She's in the chips now. What's she been doing for herself while hubby's been sweating it out in the big house? She's done very well, Casey. Several years ago, she acquired a piece of land in Texas that later proved to have oil underneath. Well, oil? Oh, yeah. She's now worth a couple of million. And that's the whole gist of the story, except that Mrs. Domingo has also gotten herself another husband without bothering to divorce her first. Yeah? Uh -huh. He's a Texas racketeer named Alfred Jenkins. Alfred Jenkins? 
unfavorably known to the police as Alf the Barber. Well, this yarn gets better and better. Yeah, but the biggest thing about it is, Mr. Prosecutor, how soon can you spring Carlos Domingo out of the pen? Uh, take this as a direct quote. There it goes for you. My office will take immediate steps to affect this poor man's release. <laughs> Mrs. Wheelbreaker. Here's your beer, Casey. Thanks, sir. I suppose you and Casey are going up to Wallstock Prison tomorrow morning to see Carlos Domingo be let out, Miss Williams. Mm Mm-hmm. We are, Ethelbert. Yep, every paper in town is going to give it front page coverage. Poor guy. Ten years in stir for a wife murder that didn't happen. And um, our impression of Mercedes Domingo is that murder couldn't have happened to a more deserving gal. I guess she ain't much good. And all the DA really has on her is a bigamy charge, and that may not stand up. Why not? She married this Alf the Barber guy while she had another husband. Well, here's the gimmick as I get it. According to a statute of limitation, if you don't hear from a wife or husband for so many years, he or she can be legally presumed dead, you see? Which means you're free to marry again. He says her lawyer told her that. Mrs. Domingo's second husband is sticking by her in all this, I read. <laughs> well, why shouldn't he? he? Married a couple of million bucks, he hopes to hang on to it. Mr. Jenkins is another sweet scented character. How did he get his nickname of Alf the Barber? Uh, there's a very complicated reason behind that, Ethelbert. Yeah? His first name is Alfred, and he used to be a barber. I see. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. Did he know she was married? Uh, she probably never told him what she'd done to her other husband. So all this has been quite a shock to the mug. Oh, Annie, it's getting late. We've got to make an early start at prison in the morning. Mm-hmm. Quite a drive to Wallstock. Let's go home and get some sleep. Uh, Who's going to pay that poor guy for all he's been through? Well, the state will end up by giving him a few thousand bucks, I guess. But even at that, he's been a fall guy for nothing. I guess he's thinking plenty about that and is pretty sure. I'd be. Well, in prison, guys learn to keep their thoughts and their feelings to themselves. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go, Annie. <laughs> There's Domingo's father. Yeah, there's there's Domingo. There's Domingo. Yeah, yeah. Say, your reporter, shoot your questions, Annie. Uh, the camera mug shoots your pictures. Uh, Miss Domingo, uh, we, thought, we want to know uh, what... No, no, no. What you ladies plan? and gentlemen, uh, ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, please. Please, please, ladies and gentlemen. My client is anxious to cooperate with the press, but one at a time. Okay, Mr. Harris. Uh, Mr. Domingo, what are your immediate plans? My only plan is to go home with my father here. Carlos, at my house you will see no more high wall. No more bar door. Oh, my son. Bud. Hold on, will you? Uh, let father and son picture be a honey. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Domingo, uh, your wife's a rich woman now. Do you intend to bring a civil action against her? Oh, excuse her? me, Miss Williams. That question should be addressed to me, not my client. Oh, okay. What's your answer, Mr. Harris? Well, civil action in this case must be an outgrowth of criminal action against Mercedes Domingo. The authorities are trying to establish a basis for criminal prosecution. But at the present time, I cannot reveal the extent of their findings. Huh? Fair enough, Mr. Harris. Only, um, you can answer this one, Mr. Domingo. How do you feel about your wife? Feel? I feel nothing, lady. Well, you must. You'd be inhuman if you didn't. <laughs> Since I was a very young man, I've been locked inside this prison. Once they came and shaved my leg and head... To make me ready for the electric chair. All for a thing I did not do. Human? I forgot how a human being feels. Ask me, this boy's father, how I feel about that man. I tell you. For what she has done to Carlos, my son, I like to cut her heart out. I like to see her die. Yeah, finish that up, Annie, will you, so we can get out of this lousy city. Yeah, I've room. got only a few more paragraphs to type, Casey. Express is sure milking the Domingo case, all right? You're telling me. 
All the facts have been in print dozens of times since the story broke. Hey, there's your phone, kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, answer it, will you? I'm checking over this last okay. page. Yeah. Williams, that's Casey speaking. Yeah, it's you, uh, Oh, hello, thanks. boss. What? When? Where? Okay, we're starting right away. Come on. Hey, what is it, Casey? Well, there's something plenty new for your story, Annie. Mercedes Domingo has been murdered. Oh, no. Yes. Sometime last night, she was out on bail. Her body has just been found in a hotel room. She was slashed to death with a razor. Our story will continue in just a moment. And now, a word about how to enjoy beer at its best. Right out of a clean glass bottle. Yes, a clean glass bottle. Because glass and glass only can bring you beer and ale as the brewer wants you to enjoy it. Clean, clear, sparkling. Unaffected by any foreign flavor. That's it. Beer that's brewery bright. And now you have a new kind of bottle. The Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle. One-way means that when it's empty, you dispose of it as you would any other food package. You are the first and last to use it. No deposit means no empties to be returned. No deposit, no fuss. This bottle also saves space in the icebox. It's easy to open. Safe to drink from. And it protects the real brewery flavor. As only clean glass can protect it. Yes, the revolutionary new Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle is sweeping America. For perfect flavor, demand beer in glass bottles. For extra convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle. The clean bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Whoever carved up Mercedes Domingo did a very thorough job, Lopez. I'll say it was a thorough job, Casey. Put, put the sheet back over that body, Captain. Well, I told you not to look, Miss Williams. Did I say she was killed last night? Huh? Yeah, about 11 o'clock. What have you found out? Well, not much so far. Floor clerk on duty can't remember anybody visiting the Domingo woman last night. But she was known here as Mrs. Jenkins. Mm. You found the murder weapon? No, we didn't find it, but Doc says only a straight razor could inflict such wounds. A barber's razor? Yeah. But we did find $10,000 in cash lying on this table where the killer couldn't have failed to see it. $10,000? Uh-huh. Anything else? Yeah, then they tore up a good-sized piece of blood-stained cardboard and burned it in that fireplace last night. Well, what kind of cardboard? Oh, heavy, good-quality stuff with a linen-like finish. Like they used to make paper collars out of. Paper collars? Yeah, my old man wore them when I was a kid. You probably never saw one, Miss Williams. Uh-uh. I sent the pieces down to the headquarters lab and... That's all I've got, Casey. Uh, outside of a perfect suspect. Yeah. It sure looks like a revenge killing. That adds up to Carlos Domingo. Or uh, Carlos' father. Mm. Do you know what he said at the prison, Casey, that he'd like to cut this woman's heart out? Yeah, yeah. I'm having both father and son picked up and brought down to headquarters. Logan, you know, this adds up so easy, I distrust the total. Yeah, frankly, Casey, I'm a little afraid of it. I'm having Jenkins, uh, Alf the barber, picked up, too. You mean because the barber's razor was used? No, Miss Williams, because with this woman dead, Jenkins has a swell chance of inheriting all her dough. And it's that darn razor that makes him an unlikely suspect. Yeah, that fogs the picture. Well, I don't see why. He used to be a barber. Look, Annie, it isn't probable he'd use a murder weapon that ties up with his nickname in his former trade. We figured the cops would get ideas from that. That's 100% correct, Mr. Williams. But, Captain, use of that razor has given you and Casey the idea that Jenkins is an unlikely suspect. Yeah, well... Huh? Hmm. What are these women, love? Yeah. I'm standing for headquarters. Carlos, his old man, and Elf Jenkins had better have perfect alibis or else. Yeah, well, I don't think that or else can apply to Carlos, so far. He's already served time for the murder of his wife and been unconditionally pardoned. And a man can't be tried twice for the same crime, can he? That's for the lawyers to argue out. I'm just a cop with a murder to solve. Let's go. At 11 o'clock last night, you were out walking, Carlos. Walking alone, you say? Yes, Captain. Walking alone. And your walk took you to Mercedes Hotel, didn't it? You got into a room and killed her. If you think so. You admit it. 
I admit nothing, I deny nothing. Give me a direct answer. Did you kill that woman? Once I said policeman. No, I did not kill. So I'm punished. But now I say, I do kill. What happened? Do you fetch Carlos on the back and let him go home? Uh, <clears throat> I guess you know you haven't much chance of sending me up for a crime you've already paid for. It. Captain, a very bad woman has been killed. Whether I kill her or another killer, she's dead. Now I say no more. <laughs> Domingo, your son says he was out between 10 o'clock and midnight. You can't prove you didn't leave the house, go to that hotel, and kill Mercedes. No. That I cannot prove. You did prove her. You did kill her. That can you prove. It was either you or your son. You think so, eh? All right, I let you think. My son, you cannot make pay again for something you have paid for before. And I paid too when you people of the law took my only son away. Me. You cannot make pay again. For I am old and have little time to live. I laugh at you, Captain. I laugh and say no more. <laughs> you were in the lounge at the Hotel Marbury at 11 last night, Jenkins? I never left the place from 9 last night till almost 2 this morning. Were you alone in the Marbury lounge or was somebody with you? Two very well-known gents. I, I, I mean gentlemen were with me. My attorney, Louis West, and Lieutenant Brenner of your own headquarters police. Lieutenant Brenner? He was at my table constantly from 10 o'clock till after midnight. Okay, Jenkins. I'm afraid your alibi will be as good as you say. Here's our car, Annie. Come on, get in. No, okay. Huh? Do you think Carlos or his father did the killing? No. They're simply 100% behind anybody who did. And Jenkins had a perfect alibi. Yeah. Say, Annie, wait. Hmm? The floor clerk at that hotel didn't remember seeing anybody visit Mercedes' room. Of course he wouldn't. Why not? Those scraps of burned cardboard Logan found, they reminded Logan of the material used for paper collars, of huh? what? Well, something else is made of the same material. Paper dickies, Annie. Dickies? Yeah, those false shirt fronts, the starch kind. <laughs> when, it, when it gets dirty, you throw it away and stick a fresh one under the collar button. Waiters wear them, Annie. Well, I don't Waiters see what that... wear them, Annie. And who'd notice a waiter in the halls of a big hotel? But Logan said none of the employees seemed possible suspects. Well, this waiter didn't have to work in the hotel. Oh, then any man could have put on a tuxedo? No, 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 not any man. He had to actually be a waiter to get by the way he did it or kill the way he did. He had to be... Annie. That Gonzalez. Gonzalez? The waiter Mercedes left Carlos for ten years ago. She walked out on Gonzalez and double-crossed him as she's double-crossed every other guy she's known. Yeah. We're going to try to find Gonzalez. Well, how can we? Carlos' chief defense lawyer, Harris. He's got a picture of Gonzalez. He has? Yeah. And Harris let me make a copy of it a few days ago. I thought City Desk might want to run it. Annie, we get that picture and then we go to work. <laughs> Walk up building. Oh, I don't know, Annie. I don't know. This will make the 13th agency we visited. No, well, our luck is bound to change. Yeah. Get work. Here's a joint. Right. Uh, you two a waitress and a chef? No. No, no. Well, in that case, nothing for you today. Only thing open for a married couple is a waitress and a chef. Uh, what, I? Cashier and counterpart? Uh, neither, pal. Well, we... you don't look like dishwashers. Oh, thanks. I guess you must be a bartender, pal. I can tell you're not a waiter. You ain't got the manner. Uh, and here are registry cards to fill out and give me 50 cents a piece. Mr. Let me say something. Go right ahead. Who's stopping you? Oh, uh, well, we're, we're not looking for jobs. Oh, you want to hire people. Well, step into my office. Sit down. Make yourself at home. What do you want? To help a restaurant? The hotel? Uh, lunch uh, room? Look, we're looking for a waiter. I've got thousands of them. But we only want one. Uh, a special one. Here's his picture. Look. You don't want this waiter. Uh, you know him? Of course I do. His name Frank Go Gomez. Frank Gomez. Yes, he used to be a fine waiter. He's undependable now. I lost two jobs. I got him. You, you don't want him. Uh, he's just the guy we do want, Mister. Okay, I warned you. Give me your address, and I'll send him to you. No, no. Give us his address. I don't do business that way. No. Uh, uh, what's that twenty-dollar bill for? Gomez's address. Well, I like to do business. 
Where did I find his card? Uh, say, that other fellow must have been looking for Gomez. Huh? Other fellow? Yeah, he was in here a half hour ago. What did the guy look like? A uh, big fellow, well dressed. That's all I noticed. Here, here's his address. Thanks, pal. Come on, well, Amy. Thanks for the double trouble. Bye. What do you think? Who do you think is looking for Gomez? Huh. Well, Logan's cop, Danny. That lug has figured those scraps of burned cardboard just the way I did. He's put his guys out to find Gonzalez. If we want an exclusive story, Annie, we've got to get to this address before Logan beats us to it. This is a terrible old tenement case. Yes, yeah, pretty bad. And... I think we're on the wrong track. No man who lives in a place like this would have passed up Mercedes ten thousand dollars. Soon find out. Here goes. Yes, it is. Let's try the door. It's unlocked. Hey, a man just sleep on that cot. Yeah. He's the guy with the picture, Annie. He was a wreck of that guy. Let me close the door. Oh. Wake up, Gonzalez. Yeah. Wake up, Gonzalez. <laughs> that used to be your name, didn't it, Gomez? You. You are police. I've been expecting a policeman. I was just dream. A pleasant dream. That everything was over. Tell me about Mercedes, fellow. She's dead. You killed her? Yes. At last. Why? Because I was once a man. And she made me a dog. You took her away from Carlos Domingo? Yes. A crazy mad for her, and I'm fool. She made me hate her husband because she say he bad to her. So when we read in paper that Carlos is arrested for her murder, we think it's fine joke on him. We say let him go to prison or die, then we will marry. You and Mercedes were in this city, right? Yes. I give her all my money and send her away. I stay here but change my name and go no more where people know me. She write me letters for a while. Then her letters stop. Go on. I go to town where she was, but she's gone. I, well, I know what she is then, and I know myself. Yeah, nice guy, weren't you? you? didn't say a few words that would have gotten caught us out of prison. I was afraid of police, afraid and full of hate for the woman who had made me a coward and a fool. Then at last, I read in the paper of how Mercedes is found. I come back. I found out where she lived. Yesterday, I called her on the telephone. What? You found her? I tell her I've kept her letters, letters that would send her to prison. She beg I let her buy the letters, and I play with her like the cat with the mouse. I say get $10,000. I will come for it tomorrow, but... I go to her last night. It's in your waiter uniform with a razor in your pocket. Yes, I tell her who I am. She's afraid. She quick offer me the money, then... Her bad life. Then my bad life should be ended, too. Take me to jail, Mr. Policeman. Let's go, Gonzalez. Stay where you are. <laughs> what are you doing here, Jenkins? Why that gun? I'm here to protect my interests, Mr. Casey. <laughs> Seems we were both trying to locate Gonzalez in the same way this afternoon. It wasn't a cop that man told us about, Annie. Who is this man who is pointing a gun at us? Mm. Yes, you two should know each other. Gonzalez? Meet Mercedes' final boyfriend, Mr. Alf the Barber Jenkins. Oh. Change that boyfriend to husband, wise guy. Make it husband and sole heir. Yeah, I'm beginning to get this straight now. Gonzalez, hand over those old letters of Mercedes. The letters? I guess she told you about that phone call from Gonzalez, Alf. Right after she got it. Yes, if Gonzalez talked or showed those letters, you would be out as Mercedes' husband. The court would award Carlos everything to Yeah. Had. Gonzalez, don't think I hold it against you for bumping off Mercedes. That's okay, fella. But I want them letters. Where are they? There's Wait, some... Gonzalez. Don't tell him. Even if he gets those letters, he doesn't dare let you live or Miss Williams and me. We've heard your story. He's come here prepared for a killing. I see. The letters are not here, if you kept your traps shut, Casey, you might have lived a little longer. After this 
Muggsy, you get it to the belly, he'll be anxious to talk. And you'll get no. it. No! Keep back that I'll go for you. Oh. Then take it, you chump. Yeah, and you take it, Mr. Jenkins. Uh. I got his gun, Annie. Yeah, he shot Gonzalez. Right through the chair. Beat it for a doctor, quick, and the cops. Yeah. Quick, kid. I'm on my way. Gonzalez, you walked right into that gun of Jenkins when he was going to give me the works. If you hadn't drawn his attention Once away, he would have... I let innocent man go to prison. I do not try to save him. Tonight, El Buena Dios gave me a chance to show it. I... You understand? Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. We've told you how much easier it is to prepare better dishes in Fire King oven glass. Now, let me tell you another reason why housewives prefer Fire King oven glass. Fire King oven glass is so easy to clean. Fire King has a special non-porous surface, which is literally mirror finished. It's almost impossible for Fire King oven glass to absorb baking stains and odors. And that's why, unlike ordinary baking dishes... Fire King oven glass always comes clean, bright, and sparkling in a jiffy. Another of the many reasons it will pay you to insist on Fire King oven glass by name. Now remember, there's only one genuine Fire King oven glass. Today, you'll find a wide variety of Fire King casseroles, high plates, general utility dishes in all sizes, wherever household glass is sold, and at amazingly low prices. Every Fire King dish is guaranteed for two full years against oven breakage. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. You found them letters after Gonzalez died, huh, Casey? Uh, the cops did, Ethelbert. Yeah. Those letters complete the case for Carlos Domingo. Mercedes' husband, only heir, he'll get her entire estate. Which is a pretty small payment for all he went through. Mm, that's so. Now I guess that Alf the barber will get more than a sample of what Carlos went through. Oh, yeah, much more. You'll get the work. Some husbands of Mercedes don't have such a good time of it, do they? She was what you call a femi fatally. Huh? Well, that's a Greek word, meaning a uh, female troublemaker. Uh, like Cleopatra and Helena Troy and, and Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Mrs. O'Leary's cow? Don't you two know your history? That cow kicked over a lantern once and burned up most of Chicago. Uh, a Femi Fatally, Casey. Annie, a Femi Fatally. What's the matter? Ethelbert. Tell us more. Crime Photographer, starring Stats Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John. <laughs> and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note Vienna. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatization on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>